just continue to let people in as they as they join so we can make sure and and chat with everybody hello everyone welcome to piano tech radio hour really love to see you all we're getting a especially great volume today uh, from the very beginning. So that's really exciting. Udo, you're a, you're a big draw, I suppose. <laughs> and usually we have, usually our participant level grows as we continue to stream throughout the hour. Um, I, will give a, I will give a quick notice to those of you that happen to be watching on Facebook or YouTube. And Pooja, if you could, in the chat for Facebook and YouTube, as well put a notice about this so that um, that can remain up in, in case people need to join the call uh, with the link to sign up. But we're going to, at about 15 minutes into the session, we're actually going to sign off of Facebook and YouTube and it'll be only accessible to the people that are in the Zoom call. And uh, of course, if you want to access a recording of this session, you can sign up for Piano Tech Radio Hour Direct Access and we have all the recordings in our member area. So you can definitely view the whole thing at a later date if you like. And I'll give a quick introduction to the program today. First of all, uh, Piano Tech Radio Hour is being brought to you by Piano Technicians Masterclasses, an online educational resource that offers you cutting edge instruction from piano industry masters without leaving your home. You can find out more at www.pianotechniciansmasterclass.com. And on today's show, we have Udo Steingraber, very exciting, from Germany. I think it's around 8 p.m. there. In 1980, Udo took over the direction of the Steingraber and Sohn Company at the tender age of 24. Along with inventors, he also created a whole new range of products within the brand. He's been the guiding force behind the European Piano Technician degree. Udo has been awarded two cultural prizes, one from the city of Beirut, the other from the region of Upper Franconia. And there's much, much more to learn about Udo. And so without further ado, I will hand it over to Udo to just say hello and then maybe hand it over to David because I know, David, you know Udo better than me and you can, yeah. you can prod him with something to get started. But Udo, go ahead and say hi. <laughs> Hi, and thank you very much for this nice, very nice uh, introduction. I'm really honored uh, to, that you spent your time with me tonight uh, in this uh, very particular year. Uh, so uh, we originally wanted to celebrate our 200th anniversary, and so Steingraber was the first Steingraber factory was founded in Thuringia, in Germany in 1820. So uh, everything was canceled and uh, I'm uh, really thankful to you that, uh, that we can talk a little bit about what we are doing, how young we are with our 200 years of age. And um, it's not so important that I'm 40 years in now. Uh, that makes me always afraid <laughs> a little bit, and I, I cannot really believe it. So, but, uh, so yeah, it's, David, it's great to have you. Uh, I I do not see you yet. Where are you on the screen, David? Me? He's here. David Anderson. Oh, what David, you? here you are. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Man, it's great to see you, brother. Um, last time we saw each other was what at the NAM show, I think. Yeah, it, it's only half a year ago. It's uh, it seems to be such a long time, uh, mm. but uh, everything changed within that time. A lot of changes. So, I just want to tell everybody that I've had a fifteen-year history with. Udo Steingraber, and he's turned out to be, you know, one of those people that you can say, you know, he's a stand-up guy. He's, he's a good guy. And he's a good guy, which is great, thank God, but he's also an amazing piano obsessive nerd geek he's 
he's probably the most trained and knowledgeable piano maker that exists, I would say with the possible exception of Michael Spreeman, who makes a one-off piano. Um, I became a Steingraber dealer in 2005. So I got a lot of up close and personal views of Udo and how he dealt with so many different people in so many different situations. And in 2005, Few people knew about Steingraber, but not, not a lot of people. And one guy said to me at one point when I was showing him the Steingraber, this was a fairly famous pianist and he'd never heard of him, never heard of the piano. And uh, I said, well, come and play it. And he played it and he was like, he was literally like dazed and and like what what is this he said how come i don't know about this <laughs> now, probably I, it's why we are so small uh, well the... yeah and he said this is the greatest piano in the world that nobody's ever heard of well <laughs> 15 years later pretty much everybody knows about Steingraders. And that's the beautiful thing. One of the beautiful things that Udo has done in 15 years is to make sure that Steingraber's are known and played and perceived in at least the major American cities and talked about all over the internet, all over these forums in the internet. And the reason that that's all happening is because they're legitimately, you know, one of the two or three finest pianos in the world. They're awesome instruments. If you've ever, if, if you, all you piano technicians have never put your hands on a Steingraber, you're in for a treat, man. I could, I could sit here for the next two hours and talk about, the, there's the things on the Steingraber that I really like. There's only like two things I, eh, that's, yeah, I don't know. But there's dozens of things that I like, I really like about this thing. And so all I can say is that Udo has a wealth of experiences. And one thing I'd like to do, whether this show or another show, is to really ask him ask you, my brother, um, what the feeling of the artists are that you interface with, that you've interfaced with for decades. What are the feelings of those artists about first Steingraber and what, what the piano they're playing is like, but then just like what is their favorite part of a piano? What, what, what makes them the happiest when it's, when it's to their liking when they come out of the piano? That's a fascinating. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I definitely want you to talk about a bit of the history of, of studying. Okay, okay. So when... When I thank you, thank you, David. Too much, too much. Uh, uh, Forty years ago, when uh, when I took over the uh, the job for my father, uh, it uh, it was a decision uh, to continue a former high end brand, which was a little bit sleepy after the uh, Second World War's time. Uh, we stopped, for example, building concept grants in uh, 1939, and it lasted until the end of the 1990s, where we uh, went back to the uh, to the high-end club by uh, uh, 
going ahead with a new production on the basis of an 1894 design of a concept grant, uh, our E272, the nine footer. Uh, and the basic thinking of all the different uh, models we created during these last 40 years, uh, five, uh, concert, uh, five grand piano models and three upright piano models was uh, what's the reason uh, to, to have another brand ne uh, besides all the high-end brands which are existing and mainly Steinway and um, our decision was uh, no imitation from anyone but uh, create your own a character of tone, of touch, be classical and very traditional, but combine it with uh, as much innovation as you can. And there is a lot to do because, as you know, uh, the uh, major brands in the market, so the big brothers of Little Steinkraber, they are uh, continuing their, their brilliant work uh, from the uh, which they uh, formed with the construction designs by the turn of the 19th century to the 20th. Uh, so for 100 years, there was very few, very little innovation. Uh, and a focusing of one sound ideal, uh, one uh, character of sound brilliance, orchestral imitation, presence, strong pianos, all that is good, but why should we imitate it? So we uh, were deciding in, already in the 1980s uh, to go for a former ideal at first. Uh, the ideal of tone, uh, which was uh, in the world of Beethoven, of uh, Schumann, Schubert, Chopin, uh, which was in the times afterwards, in the second half of the 19th century, replaced by these uh, strong and powerful orchestral instruments. So we focused on colors, on transparency, on polyphony, and then we tried to improve the action by making it quicker uh, to increase, for example, the up, the up weight without uh, uh, having a strong uh, counterweight against the finger, but uh, an elegant touch, which is quicker than normal. All that was a work of a club of five people in our construction design stuff, three of them didn't change in these 40 years. So it's a very traditional club. Uh, but uh, step by step, we found uh, things which were uh, fascinating our big bosses. And our big bosses from you and from us are the piano uh, players and especially the professional pianists. And we, I am convinced that we should offer the world of music, the, uh, the people uh, who are spending their life with music, we should enrich their lives by having alternative sounds and alternative touches and a big variety of different brands. So I'm always happy when, when there are new, new products in the market. Uh, Probably somebody of you knows uh, a colleague in France, Stéphane Polello, who recently brought out his new um, uh, 120 notes uh, concert grant, uh, <coughs> a straight strum. Uh, and all these are, is showing that our world of piano in the last at least 25, but I think a little bit more uh, years became richer than it was in the uh, uh, all over the 20th century. 
The 20th century uh, was um, compared with the 19th century, uh, the century of, not for the century for pianos. Uh, I'm in the city of Bayreuth and our uh, biggest musician here was Mr. Wagner. Unfortunately, not Mr. List. Our, our favorite is Mr. List. But uh, Richard Wagner's operas destroyed somehow towards end of the 19th century the, uh, the world of the pianists. Uh, it was replaced, the composers uh, didn't continue with uh, piano music, they continued mostly with, with operas. So, and now in the last decades, more and more piano comes up in the minds of the general and big auditoriums and pianists are again uh, the, the top musicians in the world of music. And that's why we were uh, in the last uh, 15 years more and more thinking how, uh, what can we add to the piano that it's uh, becoming even more interesting. And uh, so we first looked in the, in the history. I'm actually uh, gonna I'm actually gonna interrupt you real quick, Udo, yes, and sure. that's just to say that for anybody that's on Facebook, YouTube, just to give you a heads up, we'll be signing off our live stream now. Just make sure and subscribe to Piano Tech Radio Hour to view the recording or check for a link in the chat to register for today's session free, and you can join us on Zoom. I just want to give people a heads up on that, but yeah, we'll continue the session with Udo Steingraber, and he's really talking about the philosophy of his company. And we've got a lot more to talk about. I actually have a question in the chat. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm going to pop in this question just to make sure some people are getting a chance to participate and see if you can follow up to it. So Mark Campbell asks, uh, the information age has made many industries either obsolete or at best constantly changing. While pianos have been one thing that has held to its traditions, it too is changing. And you know, with your to the best of your knowledge, he asks. What can we expect both near term and long term, and how can we prepare? So, if, if you want to speak to that a little bit, that'd be very interesting to hear your thoughts. Uh, piano is in fashion more than uh, now, more than uh, in the mid of the uh, 20th century. Uh, I do not know.